All right, good evening, parents. It is five o'clock, and I know we still have some people joining us, so we will start with some housekeeping items. Uh, I'd like first of all to welcome you all to the, our um, coffee or tea with the principals. And so hopefully you're joining me with your favorite coffee cup or mug. Tonight's coffee cup is dog dead. Uh, and so um, I'd like to introduce some of our co-hosts for the evening. Um, as you know, I'm, Mr. I'm Aaron Cap, your middle school and high school principal. And I have joined with me tonight my team, which is uh, Michelle Aguilar, our director of ed services. Uh, she's my co-host this evening, as well as um, moderating my chat and and just being extra awesome. We have our elementary principal, Miss Margie McDermott. We are also um, included tonight. We have our uh, our outstanding director, Dr. Robert Hennings, is here. Our um, our director of uh, communications, Andy Pasolini, and um, our school nurse. And so we have a numerous other staff members that are, that are jumping in as well. And so um, I just want to thank you all for joining us. Looks like we're up to about 58 people, which is fantastic. Um, and so thank you again. And just, just some things to note, the, this meeting is being recorded. And so uh, if you have anything that you want to come back, circle back to um, in the days to come, as we prepare for our students to come back, you can all, this will be published on our school YouTube uh, page, um, usually by tomorrow morning. And you can uh, rewatch that and, and hopefully you remind yourself of some of the questions that you may have had that, that were either either answered or not answered. Um, and so we have a we have a process for that as well. So that being said, other other housekeeping pieces, please, 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 please um, mute your mics um, while others are talking. And if you have a question and uh, then then by all means, you can throw it in the chat or when the opportunity comes at the end. For question and answers, you can unmute yourself and ask those questions then. Um, our goal is to start on time. Obviously, five o'clock is our start time, and our end time is scheduled for six o'clock. And so our hope is to end at six o'clock. However, if, if questions take us beyond that, uh, we'll, we'll be here for a few minutes after that as well. Um, the majority of the time at the end will be designed to answer your questions. And so a lot of times, the things that we'll be going through piece by piece in our, in our presentation tonight uh, may answer those questions. So if you want to just hold those thoughts, write them, jot them down, um, and uh, we can circle back to those when, when we get to the Q&A time. Um, other things to note, um, if you happen to have your device handy there, when we do post some of the schedules, might be a good opportunity to take a quick screenshot or utilize the screenshot feature on your phone, whichever is convenient for you uh, technology-wise. And um, with that, I think we're about ready to begin. Uh, so thank you again for, for com coming tonight. We appreciate your time. And um, the, the focus of tonight is on our reopening procedures for bringing back middle school students under the current uh, guidelines that the state and county has given us and doing the best we can to provide for the safety and security of all of our students. So with that, let's go over the meeting agenda. Thank you, Mrs. Aguilar. All right. All right, so our four main components for tonight's conversation, before we get to the very end where we talk about our questions and answers and what we're gonna do, uh, who's coming back and who's not, is uh, the four areas of focus. Campus safety, breaks and lunches, what do those look like? Pick up and drop off, where and when and such. And then um, the fourth section is gonna be on the classroom setup, as well as what hybrid instruction will look like. Because yes, it is different than what we're seeing now. Um, and also different to note, different if you have elementary students, it's different than what they're seeing uh, in elementary classrooms. So with that, um, I believe our awesome nurse, uh, Miss Ashley Caldwell is here uh, to talk about some of our campus safety protocols. Mrs. Aguilar, we'd go to the, thank you very much. Mr. Cap, I don't think she's on just yet, but I can go over it for you if you like. We have our Director of SPED Services, Ms. Anastasia Bradshaw. Thank you very much. Go ahead. No problem. Um, so for campus safety, uh, students will um, will have to do the pre-screening. So parents, will, you will go through Parent Square to do the pre-health check before school. And it's a simple... Um, survey that you fill out um, and then it will let you know if you're clear to come on to campus. It has basic uh, questions 
fever, coughing, so on and so forth. Um, we'll be taking passive temperature checks throughout the day. And then all the students and staff will be required to wear a mask unless you have a valid medical exemption um, and make sure that you turn in that exemption to the front office um, so that we are aware. Uh, social distancing will be enforced. That'll be outdoors and indoors. And then no more than 16 people will be in a classroom that includes adults um, per the current guidance. Um, if you do have any additional questions, you can feel free to write down uh, Mrs. Caldwell's email address and you can forward her any additional questions if you have. Awesome. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bradshaw. Okay, so uh, the next piece, and I, and, and I apologize if we're moving really fast. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Um, in terms of campus safety, so some of the big questions we are asking is what are we doing to protect our students as well as our staff and also the families at home when those students return back to you? Um, so one of the key areas, you, as you can imagine, in school is the bathrooms. And so we're going to start with that part of our safety conversation. Um, we have our, just like we do in our elementary and what we will do when we, we bring our high school students back, we have a rotating schedule where our supervisors are monitoring our common areas. The plaza is a common area, the bathrooms become a common area. So they're on the outside of that, just making sure that our students are being safe and they're, they're social distancing. Um, and so the, they're signage on the bathroom doors, two students at a time. And, and for our younger students, we have spots where they're supposed to wait outside. For our older students, we felt that they didn't need that uh, that much uh, direction that they knew to, to keep themselves distance. And so, again, having some people nearby will help that as well. And so um, the idea is that they'll be outside waiting their turn. And uh, and so, again, that's that's you know the first area. And I will note as we circle back to it later that the bathrooms are cleaned on a very regular schedule. Um, there is there is uh, if you look at the picture there. I'm not sure if you can you can tell that from where you are at home, but the very top is posted cleaning schedule. So it says exactly when it was sanitized and cleaned, and 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 by whom it was on our, our facility staff. And so I'm very proud of our our director of facilities, Mr. Peter Arbile, who's who's come up with a great plan to keep our students safe with regards to disinfectants and sanitation and all the the ins and outs of that, including air filters and and what have you. So. Um, Moving to the next piece of campus safety, um, we are looking at, in, even in hybrid, some, some larger size numbers. Um, so with Ms. Aguilar, if you'd go to the next slide for me, we have on the next slide, we have um, kind of two things that we're talking about. So in, in conjunction with the bathrooms, we also have installed numerous amounts of sanitizer stations around um, the pillars. Both, they're also available inside the classrooms, but around the pillars, so students have plenty of access to hand sanitizer. We have also instituted, uh, this is very recent information, um, one-way only hallways. And with the idea that all students, when they're exiting a classroom, they're gonna, they're gonna travel to the right of their classroom. So they're gonna go out and go to the right. And we have also added longer passing periods in order to accommodate the fact that some students might have to go to the classroom, immediately to their left, they're gonna have a long walk around um, the perimeter of, of the, uh, the middle school quad, but that's also, in somewhat intentionally designed to give them some something to do during those longer breaks where we're, our staff is in the, in the in the room cleaning. And we'll, again, we'll talk more about that part later. But the key takeaway is students all moving to the right so we don't have cross traffic. Um, and the next piece of that goes into, as you know, we're a two-story campus. So um, Ms. Mrs. Aguilar, if you don't mind. Um, we have we have two main stairways that for middle school um, access, and so we have one we've designated one the one closest to our tech in the top of the library as the up route, and the one that is at the end of where our red track the high school classrooms are at the other end of, of uh, the middle school quad nearest our amazing elective teachers Miss Palowski and Mrs Wheeler's classrooms as the down stairs, and so they'll be traveling in the same direction on those stairs for all middle schoolers. Uh, so up by tech, down by the, down to headed towards Ms. Palowski and Mrs. Wheeler's classrooms respectively. Um, again, looking at the bigger picture, we want our students to be moving together. We want our students to be, to be um, not crossing paths too much. They, they, we, are, we are talking about sixth through eighth graders who regularly like to bump into each other and we wanna try and minimize that as best possible. And so we've been very, very uh, 
uh, logically planned out in terms of getting them to move from A to B to C um, as, as carefully as possible with, with space involved. We know our hallways are wide um, and the, the quad area in, in the middle school um, in downstairs is very large. So there's a lot ample space, even with half of our students returning at once, um, up to half, there's still ample space for our students to spread out and be safe. Uh, the next one I have for you in, is in terms of uh, the, the more finite details of cleaning and sanitation. So what does that look like? So you can see what a sample classroom is set up as. Um, this actually is taken from our very own Mr. Chapman's class. And you can see that the desks are spread out and we're shooting for a six foot path around each desk. We know there's been some recent legislative that said, given us some, some kind of convoluted uh, 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 size distances from three to six feet. And we want to be abundantly clear about that, that six feet is what we're going to adhere to because that's also what our teachers need. And so um, there, there's more, we can talk about that later. And so how are the classrooms cleaned? How are we, do we ensure that your students are coming into a clean space? Um, so sticking with our block schedule that we have in virtual learning, we have added uh, some, well, we haven't really added, actually, excuse me, we have um, enforced that our, that our passing periods are a little longer than our normal passing periods would be in a traditional setting. So normally they're about five minutes. It's enough time for a student to run to the bathroom, go to the next class, um, and have a few minutes to interact. Well, we've, we've made that uh, 15 minutes at this point. Um, much like we have in virtual to give them some downtime. This is designed to give our staff, Mr. Ravalo's team, time to clean, to thoroughly clean the classrooms, specifically focusing on the high touch areas inside the classroom, the desk surfaces, uh, for example. We also have other staff that are going by and, and cleaning the door handles regularly, because again, that's another high touch surface that we don't wanna overlook um, as we keep trying to think about keeping our students and staff uh, as safe as, as can be. And the safer that we, we can keep our students, we know that the families and the, um, the high need families that, the, the, that are very concerned about their health with loved ones and what have you, that we are doing our best to protect them as well. Um, and then during our breaks, as well as in between class, it, during class time, our, our restrooms will be clean and sanitized. And I referenced that earlier. We have that those, those uh, documentation on every door that says when it was cleaned last and by whom and at what time of the day, you know. So we try to be very, very, very um, controlled in terms of when we, when we clean, how we clean, and keeping our students' safety as the number one priority. That takes me to breaks and lunch. So um, things to know, what are our students gonna look like during our break time? So Mr. Cap, you just mentioned that we have 15 minute breaks. Absolutely. That's a lot of time for a middle schooler. I agree. We'll have our supervision team, myself, our director of security, um, Mr. Jenkins, he will be, we will all be out, all hands on deck, monitoring our students, conversing with them, catching up. Uh, it's been many years since I've seen many of these students in person, so I'm going to be looking around that opportunity to, to just make conversation with our students and get caught up and see how, they, how life has treated them for the last few years. Um, and so that's kind of what it's going to look like during that time. Now, specifically, what we need to focus on is students will be reminded, let's keep our distance. So uh, you know, no hugging. Um, supervision assistants will be there as well as um, during lunchtime. And uh, students can use the bathroom. They can eat their snacks, uh, visit their friends, just keep their distance. Um, that's what we ask. And if, of course, if they're not eating or drinking, then we ask them to keep their mask on um, as well as keep their backpacks and all belongings with them. And I, I want to make a special note about the backpacks because the um, in, in typical, our students, when they go to lunch, uh, when our non-COVID years, they would go to their next class, drop their backpacks off, and then go to lunch. We are not going to have them do that. That way, we allow the, student, the, the rooms to be thoroughly cleaned without having to navigate around uh, backpacks, student, student materials. So the students will have to keep their belongings with them. So it is of utmost importance that we remind our students that while they're at lunchtime, the only things they're taking out is lunch, waters, things like that. We're not pulling out our computers and, and wearing down the battery. We are not going to be uh, pulling, you know, taking our notes out and things like that. We wanna just keep our backpack zipped up, keep it with us, 
and make sure that we're being responsible with our personal belongings. Uh, we do have supervisors out there, but we want to just remind students, be responsible with your belongings. So that's a, that's a bit of a change from our norm. And so we want to let you guys know now just to front load this. So that way the students, when they come back in a few weeks, they, they know, okay, I got to keep my backpack with me. And for our incoming sixth graders who, uh, who just, who were fifth graders the last time they were on campus, they may not already know this. So we're just, you know, letting everyone know now. Um, so again, keep backpacks with them, keep control of your belongings. We don't want to leave things laying around um, uh, for other students. So just that's, that's kind of the biggest piece there. Um, the next piece that we're going to talk about, Ms. Aguilar is going to jump onto this one about pickup and drop off. Yes, so you can see. Yeah, you can see the pictures that we took in the front. Middle school pickup is going to be in the front of the school. So that's Mr. Cap modeling where the, the uh, cars will pull up. We're going to use the entire front of the school so that multiple students can exit the cars at once to make things faster. So all the way down the arches. And then of course, walking in the main gate where the flags are hanging. And Ms. Aguilar, um, classroom spacing and some of the more finite details weren't also? Yes, yeah, so there's a picture of one of our um, high school classrooms, I believe, just to give you an example of what the classes will look like with the desk spread six feet apart and the teacher spaced up at the front. Awesome, thank you, thank you. And on the next one, well, let's talk about what it's gonna look like, kind of the, the nuts and bolts. So during um, hybrid and distance learning instruction, so what is it gonna, what's gonna happen if my students are at school? What's gonna happen when my students are at home? And there's, you know, as we know, there's a third option of what's gonna happen while my students stay home the entire time. So Monday through Thursday, the students that are coming to campus are gonna alternate in, in groups. There's gonna be a Monday, Tuesday group, and a Wednesday, Thursday group. Fridays will remain asynchronous instruction days. Fridays will still have intervention. I note that there at the bottom um, for, the, for those students that are needing in-person or virtual uh, uh, tutoring sessions, we'll have those as well. All after school tutoring will be virtual. I just wanna make sure that's clear now. Um, that, is, that is a shift that, uh, from, from our norm, but we wanna make sure we're accommodating all students and knowing that our teachers may have a tutoring session scheduled on Monday, but they don't see those, excuse me, those students until Wednesday, we wanna give them all equal opportunity to attend. So if I am a Monday, Tuesday student who have selected to come on campus, I am going to go to my classroom. I'm going to follow my schedule on Mondays and Tuesdays, just like I have been all year long in virtual, but I will be moving physically from room to room. If I am at home, I am zooming in at the same time. This is different than the elementary model, so I want to be clear. This is zooming in at the same time. So the teacher in the classroom will be monitoring both the students in person, up to, up to 14 or so students, um, as well as the students uh, up to 14 or so students at home. I'm sorry, it would be more than 14, forgive me. Um, the students that stay home, that elect to stay home for that day or it's their off day. Those students will be monitored simultaneously by the same teacher. So we do need to come to an understanding that the interaction between the teachers and the students at home might be a little bit less to the degree that we've had had, we've had so far in, um, in our virtual learning. Our teachers have all been outfitted with uh, AirPods. And so they'll have an earpiece in and so they'll be able to hear the students and they have their computers. So they'll be able to see the computers. We've also checked out each of them an iPad. So they have a multitude of technology pieces at their disposal in which to interact with our students, both in person and in virtual. And so we'll, teachers will be utilizing all of those pieces and it's a big burden. And so we ask you in advance for, for some grace and some, some extra encouragement. Many of you have, have reached out to these teachers um, all year long and, and said, you know, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, I wanna thank you so much for working with our students. We know how hard it is. Um, and so we wanna ask for that same level of patience and grace as we're shifting from this virtual model into this hybrid model where they're, where they're doing both pieces at the same time. 
and and uh, that communication piece is vital. So let's keep that communication uh, lines open and making sure that we're we're speaking with with um, with grace and integrity to our teachers as well as our teachers back to our students and back to our parents. So we want to we want to have this nice blend of conversation. Um, and just let them know this isn't working or this is working. So that's the kind of things that we're we're going to expect to see in in this new uh, this new uh, new model of instruction that we're all figuring out as we go. And we have an idea what it's going to look like, but we're still figuring out as we go. Um, so again, when the first cohort cohort one and two, okay, they have a classroom group which we call stable groups. Those classroom groups are there Monday and Tuesday. On Wednesday and Thursday, they will stay home and they will zoom in at the same times, same scheduled class times. We'll go over the bell schedule in a few minutes. And so they'll be watching it at home. It's a new lesson. It's just like a, the regular continuity of the week just continues. And so it's not repeated information from uh, one group to the next group. It's just that the conversation just continues um, day through day. So um the next piece I want to talk about is um, what the, I'm sorry, the bell schedule. And um, I, I was going to ask Mrs. Aguilar to do this, but I'm going to jump on it because um, I put her on the spot already once and I don't want to do that again to her. Um, she's such a great uh, sport, though, and I appreciate her um, so much. So the middle school bell schedule is is very similar to what our current model is during virtual. And so you'll see that um, one thing that has changed is we start at 750, much like our normal schedule, with character period. And that is that first 10 minutes of the day. And what it's going to look like in, in this setting is that on um, every day, they're going to have this little character time. And that's going to be used by the teacher's discretion to not only reinforce uh, our character qualities, but also to go over current events. Um, check in with our students. It's a great opportunity that we've we've added in. Our teachers are excited about um, about using to to foster some relationships with our students that have been broken and severed during this this experience, this COVID experience that we've all been um, you know living with for the last year uh, and a few weeks now. So that's what that's going to look like. So that that means a drop off is is uh, before from seven thirty to seven fifty, and. Then uh, class begins at 750. They're, they're late at 751. And, um, and so they go from there to their period one, which is no change. They're in, in, their, in their first or second period of the day. Um, and, and why I say second, because on, on, as you know, on, we have the off days where it's two, four, six, and the, in the even days, which is one, three, five. So um, the Mondays and such. So the, uh, they go to a class and they have a long break. They, they go to their next period, then they have a, a lunch break. And then they go to their last period of the day. And then after that, they go home to do any independent work, uh, to do tutoring. Um, those, those things happen at, um, at 12.50 is when that ends. And so tutoring would not begin until after one o'clock, um, those sessions. That way, everyone has a chance to get home. Um, and so you'll look at their teacher schedule, and I believe most of them their tutoring doesn't start till two o'clock. And uh, some might have it as early as 1.30. And, and again, just go by what's in the Google Classroom for those scheduled times. Um, the next one is on white track. And Mrs. Aguilar, I will put you back on the spot. If you wouldn't mind going over white track, because we know we, when we did elementary, we had a lot of questions on, is it different? And it is, it is different than what we just discussed to a certain degree. So with that said, Mrs. Aguilar, thank you very much. Sure thing. So our white track students are on campus only two days a week for instruction. So if we're looking at this, these two different charts, the top one is sixth grade white track, Mrs. Doris class. So um, cohort A or stable group A will be on campus on Monday and the other half of the class cohort B will be zooming simultaneously at the same time. Sorry, that's redundant. <laughs> They'll be Zooming from home. And then on a Wednesday, cohort B will be on campus and cohort A will be Zooming. So the white track students for middle school will be on campus only one day a week, but it will be a full day and they'll follow the same bell schedule as the blue track students. And then the seventh and eighth grade students, of course, they typically come um, to class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it's, the, it's a similar model. Cohort A will be on campus on Tuesdays. Cohort B will be Zooming on Tuesdays. And then they will flip-flop on Thursdays. Cohort B will be on campus. And cohort A will be Zooming at home. 
And they are on the same day because they actually, um, those two teachers, Archibald and Gutierrez, flip-flop and um, teach the same subject to a different group of students. So to keep everybody safe, the teachers will be switching classrooms. So this, the students will stay put in their classroom and Ms. Archibald and Mrs. Gutierrez will be switching classes to do the instruction. Okay, so um, some of the things that we didn't really discuss in this, there are also some, um, some variances to, to our normal plan. Um, in meeting with our PE teachers, we, we, have, we, are, we are adapting by the day. So there's been some, some changes and some updates. So the current plan as of right now is that our both um, our, our Mr. Mr. Jones, uh, Coach Jones and Ms. Ms. Wood, Mrs. Wood are not having their students dress out in PE. They did make that distinction uh, with me the other day. Uh, we are asking, however, if they have, letting me know, however, if they have like their normal undershirt underneath their polo shirt or their button down shirt like I'm wearing, um, whatever uniform top we're wearing that day, they are allowed to take off that uh, and so that they're more, might be more comfortable. The way that, that uh, Coach Jones was describing how PE is running in, in that elongated period of time, he is going to have multiple activities that he's, that he's teaching. And so kind of going to wave in and out of activity. So he, he mentioned uh, as the starting activity when they return would be golf. So part of the class would be based on golf and, um, you know, a wonderful sport. Many, many of you, I'm sure play it and know it well, not a high sweat activity um, unless of course it's over hundred degrees. Um, so the, the, you know, the, the first piece is um, there, there's built in time for them to, to, if they need to lose their collared shirt, for, for example, put it with their backpack, they'll have time to do that. He's built that into the instruction time. He's not planning at this time uh, to go into the locker room. So what we have is we have a tentative date of the last week of April. It's about the 24th of April. Once high school is back in session, we've had both groups back in session and we know exactly how many students we have returning in the secondary level, we can make a final determination whether or not we will be able to go in the locker rooms and, um, or if we will stay out and just do the um, lower uh, physical stress activities that they have planned, in which case uh, skirts for the ladies and things like that are totally fine. They won't be uh, in any kind of compromising activity position for, for that. So I know those questions are, are happening. And so I just want to kind of quickly address the PE component. That is subject to change. That is subject to change. So I want to be upfront about that. Our hope is to have the locker rooms. Our hope is to, to have them assigned to students. But at this time, we are not doing that. Um, and, uh, and that's just based on numbers. Um, the students will be taking their, their, just like they do at lunchtime, they'll be taking their backpacks with them. And so when they go to their outside, their all PE will be taking place outside um, for now, again. Um, and uh, this is inclement weather permitting, of course, that's both heat and rain, et cetera. Um, and they will be taking their backpacks with them. So they'll be right adjacent to where their class is doing their activity. So just kind of want to, you know, cover some of the questions that are, that are happening about that. Um, uh, in regards to PE, again, I said that's subject to change. We will keep you guys updated on that if we do decide to use the locker rooms. Again, that is all just we're with a constant flux of information coming in. We want to be be make sure we're on we're keeping our students safe. And right now, for the first two weeks at least, the plans are for the students to have less um, strenuous activities during PE time. Additionally, because it's different outside of PE than it would be in the classroom. The students that are Zooming from home are doing asynchronous instruction during PE, which is different than what we're doing with our, our other classroom uh, setup, okay? So if you are at a cohort one, which is a Monday, Tuesday student, and you go to your PE class on Monday, Tuesday, you have asynchronous instruction. In other words, you have Google Classroom instruction from Coach Jones or Coach Woods on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. All right, that's PE only. And that's just because they are, they're having to monitor students outside of a classroom space. And it's just, it's different than what we have our classroom set up. So it's an adjustment as well for that. Um, okay, so with that, 
Um, we we do we are getting sort of the kind of the, the final thoughts part. But now now the question and answer part and the piece that you are waiting for is when we finish in about half an hour, we will release the commitment form, in which case you'll get to decide. You'll let us know if you plan to return or not. And if you have siblings um, in secondary. Now, just something to keep in mind, the, the schedule that elementary has with the AM, PM and the four days a week is different than secondary. So you might have an elementary student, as many of our families do, you might have an elementary student who has uh, classes Monday, uh, sorry, Monday through Thursday in the mornings. Your secondary students could be Monday, Tuesday students or Wednesday, Thursday students. There is, there is going to be some overlap and drop off time, but not in pickup time. This is the this is what we're we're doing the best we can with that, and we understand that it's as difficult as it is to um, to accommodate. We're going to try to accommodate all the siblings within the secondary. So that's from sixth through twelfth grade. That is my goal, and um, I'm already feeling gray hairs sprouting from trying to accommodate some of our larger families. But that's that's what we are equipment to to do our best to try and make that happen for for you all. Um, so when students are matching up with siblings um, at the end of the day for pickup, there, as Ms. Ms. Aguilar mentioned, those students will be, will be matched up in the front in that covered area right outside the admin office. Um, and so again, there's going to be some overlap there with, with secondary, but not with elementary. Elementary has a four-day week schedule. We have a two-day week schedule. Um, all right. So uh, that being said, before we get to the the commitment form and things like that. Let's start with our Q and A's. Miss, um, Mrs. McDermott, would you mind the questions that I've not already addressed? Uh, would you mind going through those for me, please? Yes, I sure can. I actually just responded to a question to Miss Carrie. I can go back up to the beginning. Um, will there? This is a good question. Will there be opportunity for movement, socially distanced games? I'm sorry, I was reading your answer on that one. Um, so with, I'm not sure if she means during PE or during break times. Um, I, when I read it, I took it because we hadn't quite, we hadn't got to PE yet. Mm -hmm. I took it as opportunity for movement in general, um, like breaks throughout the day. The, that's how I took the question. Let me know if I'm not right, Miss um, Eddie. Yeah. Hi, yeah, I was just wondering if like during lunch, that's a long, you know, amount of time they've been sitting all day. Um, they're going to be guarding their backpacks. So also, so I was just wondering, is there opportunity for them to leave? You know, I think for, for break, you said they would be guarding their backpacks. I'm not sure for lunch, if they were going to have to do the same thing and be kind of tied to that, or if they were going to have some opportunity to actually play, run around outside of their PE time. As, as far as the backpacks, they're going to be responsible for their backpacks the entirety of the day. Um, and so with the exception of when they go out to the bathroom uh, during class time, they, they, they will be responsible for their, their whatever's on their back for that entirety of the day. Um, now, break time, uh, will lunchtime especially, will they have an opportunity to use the field? We are still learning as things grow and change uh, by the day what we can do and so our hope is to provide some opportunity for them to to get their wiggles out and at this point I, all i can really answer that is our, we, we have a, a very good hope that that's going to happen um i do not like students sitting around uh, mm -hmm. idle i any more than i can imagine you do Ms. Eddie. so i would like to say that, that that's a good chance that we'll be having activity so the next question is is there a plan to marry up siblings with elementary? Uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, a few months ago, during the um, the reunification would happen during on the Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Thursday, with regards to um, at the end of the day, um, if their if their pickup and drop off times are the same. Um, and so, Mrs. McDermott, I believe your afternoon cohort drop off or pickup, sorry, pickup time is at two or two thirty. Two. Two. So with our schedules being out at 1250, there would not be a, a, a pickup overlap per se. So the only real sibling, you know, um, marrying up that we can do is for secondary for the sixth through 12th graders. 
Okay, thank you. The next question um, was pretty much answered. It's in regarding PE, if they're going to be changing, you answered that Mr. Cap. So that kind of um, answers the question for masks. Um, and then how is PE going to be taught? That's been asked, answered by Mr. Cap. This is a good question. What about girls in skirts for PE? Mention that, and again, going back to what um, what I mentioned about the uh, less strenuous activities. So there will be the uh, you know modified, so that way they're not putting the students in a compromising position. Okay, and then the backpack question has been answered. Um, what about students who stay virtual? How will they do golf, for example? Um, so the virtual instruction is asynchronous for PE, and so they're they're. Um, when they're not on campus. So their instruction will be on Google Classroom and they will have activities that they are supposed to follow um, much like they have been so far, except it'll be like workout routines and whatnot. Okay, thank you. The next question is since outside six feet apart doing activities, can they take off their masks? Uh, we'd, we'd like to ask that our students keep their masks on at all times. It's recommended even during athletic uh, things, but I also have Dr. Hennings here who would love to speak about that. Yeah, and the uh, the, the state and the county uh, have implemented that that masks must remain on all times. In fact, in Riverside County, all schools, students have to keep their masks on not only when they're indoors, but also when they're outdoors, just like the adults. That's the current policy that's imposed right now on schools, unless, of course, they have a valid medical waiver. Okay, thank you. I'm going to read this question because I did answer it in the chat, but just in case some of you are on your phones and you don't have access to the chat. Um, are you trying to add sex ed into PE when they come back? Answered, our California Health Youth Act classes will be pre-recorded lessons that will be given to students on asynchronous Fridays and parents still have the opportunity to opt out. Um, next question is, Will sixth grade students be given instruction or a tour like in past years of the middle school building since switching classes will be new to them? That's a fantastic question. So uh, we are creating a video. Ms. Pasolini, our communications director, is creating a video, um, much like with some of the images that I used in today's uh, tonight's presentation um, in order to show the way students are moving, the where and what have you. So um, it's happening. It's coming. Next question, I just wanna check um, the comment was made. Okay, I think we covered that. Let me know, send me a chat, Ms. Roberts, if it was not covered. Um, and then the next question is, what is the plan if there is exposure to COVID? Awesome, another great question. Uh, Mrs. Bradshaw, would you mind, um, I, on behalf of uh, Ms. Caldwell, our nurse, answering that? Well, the protocol would be that the student is going to um, be escorted to the health office. Um, the nurse will do an assessment. The student will then, of course, have parents called. Um, she'll give the parent the information as far as going to get tested for COVID. Um, and then she will be following up with the parent. There'll be a, a survey, a questionnaire that they have to fill out and then bring that information back to her once the student is actually cleared um, to return. So we'll, we'll be following all of the COVID guidelines um, if a student is exposed to COVID. So if the student if the parent is aware prior to the student coming to school, then the parent would need to inform our nurse so that she's aware. Um, and then she'll give you the next steps as to how to clear um, their student for return. Hopefully that answered that, that question. Thank you, Mrs. Bradshaw. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Bradshaw. So next question, um, I believe this was answered, but I'm gonna read it just in case. How long of a time gap will there be for middle and high school or were they let out at the same time? I believe you answered that, Mr. Cap. Um, and yeah, I did not. Oh, sorry. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so the high school schedule right now, there's still a little bit in flux. And so the high school will go later in the day. Um, the earliest we would see, conceive dismissal is about 1.30. And so the, the amount of time lag from, from 12.50 to 1.30 is more than we are comfortable with having students um, wait inside unless there's inclement weather. So um, go ahead. Okay, great. Next question. Currently, some Zooms 
end before the bell rings. It is assumed that Zooms will go bell to bell since the kids in school don't have a home setting to break or if the class instruction is over. Does the Zoom end, students released, and the cohorts on campus have downtime in the classroom before the actual bell rings? Does that make sense and how I'm asking it? That's, that's a really good question. Uh, yes, so what we'll see in this shift to hybrid is um, is a, a good a, a use of our time where we are going bell to bell and those 15 minute breaks that we're taking or the 30 minute lunch break, uh, 15 minute break, sorry, singular, and the 30 minute break will be the same for the students at home, whether they are on all virtual instruction or if they are the students who are on, on their non cohort attendance day, they will be, um, they will use that as downtime. The teachers will keep their Zoom open for that entirety of the class period in order to meet the needs of the students both at home as well as students that are there in person. Um, so great question, thank you for asking. Next question, how are cohorts determined? Can we give our input or preferences on the commitment form? So in the commitment form, the question I ask is, uh, you know, do you plan to return? Um, and then if you have any siblings. And so we'll do our best to, to bring the families together. So that way you have, you know, if you have a child in sixth grade and a child in eighth grade, for example, you're not coming on, on different days. Our, our hope is to have them in the same cohorted days. So that way they're Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and uh, that's, that's the level of input that we have on, on that commitment form. Next. Unlike elementary, we don't have an AM PM. So sorry, I want to throw that part back out there. We did we took that part off of the form. Okay. Next question. Um, so as the middle schoolers are getting out at 1250, can they go to the library or stay in class to work while waiting for their siblings? At this time, no, they will wait out front for parent pickup. When we drop off in the morning, is it like old school drop off? Do we let them out or do we wait for the door to be opened? Uh, you can begin dropping them off as early as 730 in terms of when the doors will be open, the, the main gates will be open at 730. Um, if they get dropped off a few minutes prior to that, it, as you know, as often happens, um, by all means that they're just going to have to wait there in, at, at the gate, much like they did in the past, um, but socially distanced, masked on. Okay, next question. Can middle and elementary be dropped off at the same time and place? Um, the elementary is dropping off in the back of the school. And if you have a student who's who's coming in uh, on a Monday, Tuesday, uh, that's a middle schooler, and you want to drop them off in the back, um, when, I, I'll, when we look at the commitment forms and information, Mrs. Um, McDermott and I will have to look at that and see uh, just how many students we have dropping off because we don't have, we have staff, staffing people, you know, certain strategically around campus. For example, when high school starts, I'll be down at a different gate. And then as soon as the middle school starts at 730, I'm going to close that gate and move up to this one. So I kind of have to, you know, be strategic about where we have people. So our, my, my, my long answer to a short question is, um, Probably. <laughs> okay. Um, and the next question, will there be any on-campus student COVID testing? Ooh, Dr. Hennings, do you, you, can you field that one for me? We will still have uh, an afternoon uh, COVID testing um, uh, clinic that we have been running for, for staff and our student athletes, because there is a requirement for student athletes to, to have testing. It, it's just, a, it's a convenience that, that we have in place. And if families want to continue uh, using it, uh, we can. And, but I uh, just want to be clear that uh, the school is not mandating or requiring uh, students to receive uh, COVID testing because they're attending school on campus. Um, that is a parent choice, parent decision, whether or not to get their, their children COVID tested. Thank you, Dr. Hennings. Um, next question, I believe has already been answered. Hold on just one second. Oh, um, if I might add a middle school teacher opinion on the matter of girls in skirts, Regardless of PE activity, I ensure that my daughter always wears shorts under her skirt due to the stairs, et cetera, during regular movement around campus and in the classroom. 
Thank you for sharing that. That's great feedback. Um, next question, can middle school, this has been answered already, but I'm going to read it again because I think we need to just make sure that it's clear. Um, can middle school kids go out to the field or blacktop at 1250 after class and wait until their siblings get out of elementary an hour later so parents don't have to drive home and then turn right back around? Um, no, sorry, shortest answer you ever. Um, unfortunately, I have to go out the front and wait for parent pickup there. Um, there is not supervision out there. And if there are, that's because we have our high school PE running out there at that same time. So we want to make sure all students are moving out, off campus at the end of the day to the front of, of school. Okay. Next question. If we sign up for a cohort and need to change to hybrid, can we without losing blue status for the next year? It, the, the, yeah, the, I'm sorry, the blue status does not, uh, is not affected one, one bit. Well, if you decide to stay home for virtual learning for the remainder of the year, that is fine. You're still a blue track student. If you decide to come on, uh, you know, I'm on campus days a week, you're still a blue track student. That will not change. And so, um, uh, that hopefully that answered the question. If we decide to keep our kids home for the rest of this school year, will they still be able to attend in the same track next year? Yes. From the last question, absolutely yes. They stay on blue. Um, next question. What about students that don't have siblings? What cohort will they be in? Uh, it, it just depends. We have the Monday, Tuesday group and the Wednesday, Thursday group. So it depends on how the numbers shake out. So we, we can go up to, as I said, 14, 15 students um, in a class. And um, being that there is, uh, we have six classes of the day for middle school students and seven for high school students, there is some absolute possibility that there might be some schedule changes to the students that come when they come back, because we have to make sure that we keep our numbers within the class to um, 16 adult, 16, including adult or fewer. And so we may have a class that only has five or six whereas another class has 13 or 14. So there might be some balancing that has to happen. Um, but again, that doesn't change blue track status. Um, and, uh, it, and unfortunately does not determine, you know, whether you're this cohort or that. So we're, we'll, we'll do our best to, to keep everything balanced. Great. Next question. Uh, can students still ride their bikes to school? Yes. Great. Uh, next question. What if a student starts hybrid and doesn't feel comfortable? Can they go back to distance learning? Yes. Okay. This has already been answered where middle school uh, students will be picked up on. Um, I believe this has been answered too, but we can talk about it a little bit more. Uh, will there be contact contact tracing if someone tests positive? Uh, Ms. Bradshaw uh, can explain that further, but yes. Yes, we have to follow the county guidelines and that is part of the county guidelines, so yes. Okay, next, thank you, Mrs. Bradshaw. Next question, when is the commitment form due? Monday morning of this next week, Monday morning um, at, that's on the last slide. I, I think I said 9 a.m., I'm gonna verify. Yes, 9 a.m., okay. Monday the 29th at 9 a.m. Okay. And then the next question has been asked already and answered. And then no need to apologize, Ms. Lyman. Your question, is there a difference between cohort and hybrid? Um, hybrid is just the instructional model. Cohorts are what we're calling the, the groups that come on Monday, Tuesday, or um, Wednesday, Thursday. And to, to further add confusion, um, we have the name stable groups, which is what the classroom groupings of students are. And so... Um, we love that we have all these, these great new words and education that we get to throw around. And we're sorry, so, so terribly sorry for any confusion that it causes. Um, but uh, it, essentially hybrid again is, is just the fact that we have a combination of virtual and in-person instruction. And that concludes our questions, Mr. Cap. Fantastic. Okay, some really great questions. And I, I wanna thank you for all, everyone that asked a question. Those of you who did not ask a question, that is okay. If you have thoughts, concerns that come to you later, right? Please send me an email. You can email any of us at any time. Um, my email address is my first initial, Aaron. Uh, so A cap C A P P at SRA.MN. If you have any questions related to this, 
Um, and so when we get our commitment forms all uh, compiled, and so Monday, you know, Monday at 9.01 a.m., I'm going to start looking at those forms and see, okay, what are our numbers uh, stacking up to look like? We can then start working on creating those stable groups and making sure that our classrooms have, have uh, we have with the number 14, 14, 15 students or fewer in every class, so that way we're not over um, and, and then get that information back into your hands. So that way, when you come back, when your students come back on the 12th, they will already know whom, uh, sorry, whom they're with in a, in a cohorted group, um, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Thursday. And if there are any schedule changes, adjustments, the schedules, which we're trying our absolute best not to have, that those um, are given some time to, to, for you to kind of process, okay, that's what it's gonna look like. I would have to move to this period and, and the why for that. So our hope is to have as little disruption as possible. Um, the, the last thing we wanna do is cause a, a ton of disruption right you know, before the end of the year when we've sort of finally kind of acquiesced into the situation that we're in. We feel like what we have to offer is the absolute best that we can given the guidelines that we have to work with. And so I'm very proud of our teachers and the work they've done in virtual learning. I'm, I'm proud in advance of the work that they will be doing in hybrid. And I am, I am uh, be beside myself with thinking about how difficult it's going to be for them, but they are absolutely equal to the task. And we are doing our best on our end to provide as much uh, support and, and training as we can to make sure they're prepared to, do, to meet the needs of your students in this new uh, new, new way of teaching, a new way of learning. All right. Um, any other th further thoughts, questions, concerns? Yeah, a few more questions were dropped into the chat, chat box. I don't see them. I apologize. Oh, one last question. Was the white track moved to Monday, Wednesday? Ms. Aguilar, would you go back to the slide show um, white track schedule? While that's coming up, um, the normal, uh, and I, I'm not sure, um, I see the name Shauna, um, the normal white track Monday, Wednesday is um, for our sixth graders, and that is our, um, our typical day instruction days for them on campus, um, and for seventh and eighth graders, they're, they're Wednesday, I'm sorry, oh my gosh, um, Tuesday and Thursday, and I think I caught a typo. Um, Mrs. Aguilar. I think we put Monday and Wednesday on both, I, hence the confusion there. So we caught a typo. Uh, Shauna, I'm not sure if you're still here. Thank you. Good catch. Wednesday, uh, seventh and eighth grade is Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so sorry about that. I apologize. Do you want me to put that up? I'm sorry, it disappeared from my screen. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I, it we'd have to change the uh, the graphic. So yeah. Um, There's a question about uh, about the emailing yes. of commitment forms, and and we're going to post post it on, onto Parent Square, which will send it on to the parents' email. Thank you. And then the next question. Um, just for clarifying purposes, we're, um, teachers will be in the classroom and not teaching virtually unless unless um, the students are home? The teachers are teaching simultaneously. So they're doing, they're teaching virtually to the students who are at home as well as in person. They're doing both at the same time. And with the exception of Fridays, which is all asynchronous. And then the next question, um, can they wear their modified uniforms on campus? No, they're in, in regular uniform, just like we've 
we've uh, addressed with our, our elementary students. Um, they have the, the approved list from uh, Dennis uniforms available as well as our everyday dress, which would be the button down shirt for the gentleman or blouse, uh, white, sorry, white button down shirt for the gentleman and for the ladies um, and blue slacks, um, Docker style slacks. That would be the everyday dress. Um, I, and I think I think the question I might also be pointed at, we, we did uh, do a, a slight relaxation um, a few weeks ago. We let, let parents know. Um, uh, Mrs. McDermott, can you elaborate on what the relaxation was? Absolutely. The relaxation is that um, they can have uh, white polos or um, navy polos. They don't have to be Dennis um, uniform. They can be white polos shirts. And this this was done because uh, just with the short period of time and the financial investment uh, for for the cost of, of the uniforms, there are lower class cost options uh, in nearby shopping centers uh, around the school, and, and and so far a lot of parents uh, from elementary have expressed their appreciation for that. And same thing will apply for middle and high school. Thank you, Dr. Hennings. I did want to add too, also that um, I've been asked this question by some of our parents at the elementary level is, do they need to cut off their patch from their dentist uniform and put it on their polo? No, they do no. not. You do not need to do that. No, no this, 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 is a, this is just part of our flexibility this year of getting through this pandemic year together. Thank you for that, Dr. Hennings. Um, next question, what happened to the sibling lotto? Um, Dr. Haynes, would you mind going over when we the next lotto is taking place? The, the lottery for admission, yes. So in November uh, is when the the applications uh, open up again for the the next lottery one, which will be uh, next spring. Um, for this upcoming school year, the lottery had already been run uh, last uh, last spring. And so the, the next lottery uh, is, is next spring and the window opens up uh, to enter for that lottery this upcoming November. Thank you, Dr. Hennings. Next question is on, um, they, um, this person said that it's, it's a question in regard to the MacBook purchase program for middle school students. Are we going to continue that? That was something, uh, so when, when I came in, that, that was something that uh, uh, sixth graders um, uh, have a Chromebook and then uh, seventh grade this year, seventh grade and up, we're, we're being grandfathered to be able to continue with that program. Uh, something that uh, we haven't uh, released yet is that uh, Apple Computer Inc. Uh, switched to their own in-house uh, processor. It's called the, the, the M processor. Um, previous uh, MacBooks were using Intel processors. Because they were Intel processors, there were certain uh, softwares that we were able to run on the MacBooks for that, that we needed to for uh, that, that the students would use. Um, now that MacBook has, has uh, ditched using those Intel-based processors, um, the new new MacBooks, we would not be able to run the uh, the Edu softwares that we that we need for students because that going forward, uh, students that uh, need uh, a laptop level of computing device beyond the Chromebook, uh, we will have to go in the direction of a PC based program. So, long answer, but basically. The short answer is because of the changes that Apple Computer has done, it negates the need of doing a continuing that Apple uh, purchasing a program. So I'll get I'll get some information out about about that issue. Thank you, Dr. Hennings. The next question, so a couple more questions about uniform. Um, the email said polos and skirts from Target or Walmart are okay. Yes, that is correct. 
Um, the next question is, what is it looking like for the 21-22 year? Um, are we looking at hybrid and distance learning options again? I'll jump in on that one. So um, as of right now, uh, the, our, our state lawmakers, governor and likes, uh, have not been making uh, plans or uh, even discussions about next school year. They're still focused on the here and now. And right now, the here and now is they've, they've made a minor adjustment, um, reducing student distance inside a classroom only from six feet to three feet. Uh, some politicians have even alluded to that that solves all the problems for schools and schools can just, you know, reopen full tilt. It's just not the case. Uh, they still have the six foot distancing requirement everywhere else on campus outside of the actual classroom, including places of like, like locker rooms and so on and so forth. Uh, they also have in place a six foot distancing requirement that the teacher has to maintain away from the students, even inside the classroom. Um, so basically just making that, that slight change, allowing students to be a little bit closer to each other in the classroom doesn't solve the issue for schools to be able to have full loads in the classrooms. Uh, they, they have not ro rolled back any of the uh, penalties or uh, Cal OSHA uh, uh, requirements on schools. They also haven't removed the requirement of having our COVID safety plans uh, uh, to abide by, which, which requires us maintaining these, these stable groups and having the, uh, the limited load in classrooms of 16 persons, that, which includes the mix of adults and students. So um, I, I think that this is the first uh, the, the first change that we're probably going to see in a series of changes between now and, and, and summer, um, because a lot of uh, people who work in schools are given an earful, sending emails, sending phone calls uh, to, to any lawmaker or bureaucracy that has any involvement in applying what restrictions are on, on schools. They're hearing a lot, and, and the public is being very vocal about it. And uh, so uh, more to come. Uh, we're, we're also expecting some changes very soon at the county level, I would imagine. Uh, for instance, the, the county announced today uh, the dismissal of their count, county health uh, director uh, and replaced with, with someone else. And so on Wednesdays, uh, schools uh, typically have meetings with the public health uh, director uh, to to hear what changes and guidance that there are, and and to find out uh, how their rules apply to certain situations. Uh, um, so tomorrow would be the first uh, physical opportunity for the new public health uh, director to be meeting with with school leaders, and so it, it'll be. Uh, we're very interested to hear uh, his perspective and what what. Uh, uh, direction that he he sees for the county and, and his schools are concerned. Uh, uh, so I imagine that we will see some more changes. We've seen lots of changes since a year ago, and, and it seemed like about every two three weeks there was some kind of major change. Uh, you know that three foot provision. It's interesting that or and ironic that that three foot provision was in place dur during the summer but then they took it away, but now they're giving it back. It, it's so, you know, how many plans can, can schools be expected to, to write in a year? And how many rule changes can we be expected uh, to, to implement? Um, we don't know the limit because we're, we're living that limit. Uh, that every week or two, there's something for us to change, some new rule that we have to implement. So there's still about, uh, two months left in the school year, there will be more changes. But I think we're starting to see the beginning that all of these changes are starting to go into the direction of less restrictiveness. That puts us on the right trajectory toward making the big changes that we're wanting to see for more openness for next school year. 
Thank you for that, Dr. Hennings. Next question doesn't really have to do with the reopening plan. However, it's a good question. Um, their sixth grader has their own Chromebook. Will he be given access to the Wi-Fi when he's on campus? And when and how will this take place? And then do I need to bring his Chromebook to campus prior to his first day back? Dr. Uh, Hennings, I'll, I'll, co I'll consult with our IT department, but I, I I think we can accommodate a, a bring your own device uh, for, for, for this school year. We do have a, a guest Wi-Fi uh, network, but we, I think we have a mechanism that uh, where the student can still sign into their accounts, even on their own device uh, through our network. Great, thank you. And then the next last question it looks like so far is, uh, will there be a Windows purchase program? Uh, the the Apple purchase program that that was something that was set up and unique uh, with with Apple. And, you know, we won't have a a uh, that that type of uh, arrangement through a, a a maker of a Windows uh, platform. That concludes the rest of our questions in the chat. Awesome. Thank you, Mrs. McDermott, uh, Dr. Hennings, Mrs. Bradshaw, and Mrs. Aguilar for your assistance in answering all those questions. And parents, I want to thank you all for taking some time out of your evening. Um, it is just after six o'clock, and um, I recognize that you all have busy schedules. You all are trying to navigate so many things um, right now with uh, businesses and, and what have you. So we just we appreciate your, your time that you have spent with us tonight and um, the questions that you asked the questions were phenomenal. Thank you so much for that. Um, my teaching team that, that jumped in with us tonight, I see many of you on here, and I'm grateful that you, you guys, uh, you ladies and gentlemen, came, and um, hopefully we were able to answer all the questions. Um, I saw a few comments uh, from some of the families, so for those of you that, that were reaching out, say thanks. I appreciate that. My team appreciates that. Our teachers appreciate that. Um, I, I, I wanted to say thank you all for, for being here. And if you're curious, um, our teachers love, love, love to hear thanks and they cannot hear it enough. And I know that we we are all in a difficult spot and it's difficult to, to kind of set things aside every once in a while and think about others. And I wanna just encourage you, please, if you get a minute, reach out to those teachers, reach out to our team and say, and thank them for doing the best they can in this difficult situation. So that being said, have an amazing evening, everyone. We appreciate you coming. We appreciate your, your questions, your time, and your energies. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan Sitch family. Appreciate you all. Ms. Palowski, if you're still on, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. All right, ladies, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and end the, the meeting. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Cap.